Okay, just like you mentioned that there are three categories, and uh, normally what are their arguments? Like uh, arguments from the uh, atheist and the uh, Christian, perhaps? Um, okay, their arguments are so lame. Um, usually, the, the, pig the pigeons of the park are just trying to attack Islam with something they've heard online and they don't really understand it. But to be honest with you, like I said, I don't engage them people. But I want to give a kind of advice to Muslim brothers and sisters who are doing da'wah. Stop being victims, please, I beg of thee. Don't, you know, I have Muslims, oh, he asked me this question, I don't know how to respond. Uh, please, relax. Okay, do not be victims. Yeah, first of all, you, let me rephrase that. When I do dawah, I'm not necessarily caring whether that particular guy in front of me initially is going to accept Islam, realistically. The first thing I'm establishing is that he can't touch Islam, that he can't challenge my reasons as to why I'm a Muslim. When he can't do that, then we can take it to him and what he believes. So this is the first thing, is to um, don't be a victim. So for example, an atheist has this one-liner, they love it. And Muslims fall for it time and time and time again. Prove your God. Sorry, what? Yeah, prove your God, prove God exists. Right, now what will happen at this moment, usually, Muslims will start going into why God, creation, that, all these things. And the atheist is loving it now. And he's going to start digging and this, that, the other. Now with me, I have a rule. You'll get the first swing. I'll allow the first swing. But then you'll spend the rest of the fight on the ropes. Yeah, you'll, you'll ask the first question, no problem. But then I'm going to interrogate you. Because I'm not here to prove anything to you. So if they come to me and they say, prove your God, my response is a very sweet response that anybody can do. To who? They go, what? Prove God to who? Do you want me to prove God exists to you? Or do you want me to tell you why I believe God exists? Which one do you want me to do? Well, prove it to me. Okay. How? What? How? How do I prove it to you? What do you mean? Well, what's your burden of proof? What will you accept as a standard? What do I have to do to demonstrate God's existence? Well, 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 well I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? So how do you know the evidence is not there? You don't even know what you're looking for. So now the atheist is looking really stupid now. Now, did you notice he thought he was being clever asking me the question? Now he's on the ropes. Well, I don't know. Okay, let me ask you another question then. So I'm asking him questions now. What's the best evidence anybody's brought to you to convince you God exists? Well, no one's brought anything. I said, shut up. You, you, you're banging on like no one's ever brought you evidence, and you're acting like you've never seen evidence. Surely somebody must have brought something. So now they're, now they're stuck because they've never been asked this question. Because remember, after the first question, prove your God, victim Muslim is trying to justify God, trying to justify God. With me, he's sweating now. He doesn't know what he's got himself into. That question that usually works is down the drain now. Oh, uh, oh, oh okay. Then it'll, then it'll start right. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Tell me why you believe God exists. Right? So, now, so now, now he realizes he's got no standard, no criteria. So now he wants to understand me. Oh, you want to know why I believe God exists? Okay. The universe, mate. This universe couldn't exist without a creator. When I look at the design inference and I see how I could, something is a product of design, I see that same design inference when I look at DNA and I have to ask the question, if, the, if, if DNA shows signs of design, then it requires a designer. Now here's the thing now, and this is where I'm talking about the victim Muslim flex. It doesn't matter, as a proper right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether they accept what you're saying. It doesn't matter if they, walk, if they get convinced by what you're saying. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you've demonstrated to them that your belief 
in God, in a creator, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is based upon ration, reason, and logic, and intellect. And they are nothing more than emotion now. They're, they're emotional wrecks at this point. So you've demonstrated that it's not them who have intellect, reason, ration, and logic, which they thought they had, but in fact it's you. And if they want to say what you believe is false now, it's for them to prove it. Because a belief is... Now, sorry, I'm rambling a little bit. But belief, basically all it means is the acceptance of something to be true. To accept something to be true means you've heard a proposition. When you hear a proposition, there'll be reasons supporting that proposition for you to accept or reject that particular proposition. So you cannot, you do not need proof for a belief, but you need justified reason. And to challenge any belief, you need to challenge the reasons. So once you present to an atheist your reasons, you know, my favorite, my favorite response when they say, why you believe in God as well? I say science. And you should see an atheist face <laughs> when you say that. Because they're like, what? And I did this in, I did this in the Qatar World Cup to this Argentinian guy. He pulled out his science sword. I pulled out my science sword. He dropped his sword. He was blown away. The fact that I didn't once use the Quran I didn't once use the hadith. I didn't once use the example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu as to why my reasons that I believe in God. He was shocked. I just used science, science, science. And the reason I did this, because this is how I became a believer in a creator. It wasn't because I believed in religion. It wasn't because I read the Quran. It wasn't because I heard hadith. It was because I looked at this universe and everything contained within it. And I said, this didn't happen by accident. SubhanAllah. I pass back the mic to Abu Sharis. Uh, basically, this is where we have a lot of similarities, I think, uh, through our conversations in the car. Uh, because we are that type of uh, no-nonsense, non-apologetic, that we become so defensive. Maybe some of you know me, know our style of da'wah that we are not so defensive in our da'wah that we become apologetic. You know, a lot of Muslims were just, when people start to question about Islam, it's good questions, but we become so defensive by, no, actually, it's not like that. No, actually, you know why? It's like, wait, why do I have to defend myself? i just give you an example before I pass the mic back to uh, Abu Sharis. For example, it depends on who asks. Some people might ask, okay, why in Islam, men are allowed to marry up to four. So I ask them, why not? Why not? No, you know, how can you marry? I say, wait, 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 wait. Uh, which, religion do you, which religion do you belong to? They will say certain religion. If let's say at this, like he say, I don't really have to answer. Because marrying more than one, two, three, or four is a moral issue, and at this have no Sub, uh, objective morality to begin with. You can sleep around, you can sleep before you get married, and what's wrong for a man to take responsibility to marry up to four? He is man enough to take the responsibility, and you are not man enough to marry the girl that you like and you sleep around. So what right that do you have to questions about Islam? You see, this is a moral issue. So we become not so apologetic. We just go on the offensive. Offensive by giving some facts.